What is that? All right, let's get back on. All right. I'm having fun. This was the mistake I made when we first jumped on these. Okay, here's the deal. It's not a Cadillac, right? So are you going to feel it? Yes. But did I feel like I was going to rattle my teeth out of my head? Today is going to be an electrifying episode. We're going to be taking a ride on the wild side with our new X-Peak mountain bikes. I've always wanted Charity to come mountain biking with me and she's been hesitant. So I really feel like this is gonna be one way that I can get her to come with me and enjoy it also. We'll see. Here's the thing. I just, my temperament, my personality is I'm very cautious. And so things that feel dangerous, (laughs) it's just not on my top 10 list. So will these X peak mountain bikes be able to get through this treacherous terrain because we're about ready to be going through some sandy areas with big tree roots sticking up out of the ground. You're not making me feel any more comfortable about this (laughs) your description of this trail. (laughs) So this is going to be the more moderate version of the trail. And then if we can get through this part, I'll take you over to part two. Ooh, I just can't wait. All right, well, let's get this show on the road. Let's go. Let's mount up. Don't forget your helmet. No, I know. How you doing back there? Just peachy. It's not too bad, is it? So far. Now, up here is where the tree roots are. So far, he says. The nice thing about these big fat tires is you can really get through a lot of the sand, just gun it with the throttle. So that'll get you through a lot of this thick sand. Yeah. Do you feel confident on it, on the bike? Not at all. No? (laughs) Not at all. I think I have PTSD from when I hit my front brake on the motorcycle that time and went down. And I think ever since then, I'm like a little bit cautious. Is that when we were going to that ice cream place? Yes. Yes. Okay, here's the tree roots. So now you can just, just drive right over them. Pooch on that one. <laughs> drive right over them. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about some of the actual like specs on this new X Peak electric bike because like I'm just kind of impressed off of the gate with the power. Like honestly, once that I realized you could just throttle it and I didn't have to actually like try to push it through or whatever, because like for me, it feels heavy, but it's not really that heavy for a electric, electric mountain bike because of just, you have to remember, you know, an electric bike is just going to have lots of extra stuff versus a regular bike. So for an electric bike, that's a mountain bike. It's actually not that heavy. It's only 67 pounds, which isn't that bad at all. So, and it can be yeah. carried on specific bike racks for yeah. electric bikes. And we'll have more on that in just a little bit because you're going to want to know what type of bike rack you would want. That's super, super important yeah. for reasons we'll talk about in a little bit. Here is tier Trail two. Tier 2. Are right. you ready to do this? I actually feel like after that one, I'm feeling a little more confident. All right. All right. All right, let's go. All right. Yeehaw! Now this is a lot of sand here. And on this trail, it does get a little bit deep with sand. (laughs) Whoa, it does get a little bit deep with sand. So let's uh, get some momentum going through it. All right. Or just like, it looks like I could come up and like, yeah, you can come like up the Jeep there, trails but... where you have like a workaround or whatever. Yeah, you can Maybe go right I... through this though. No problem. Stay on the grassy areas. The nice thing is the big fat tires, I'm just trucking right through this. Whoa. See, until I slip. Keep the momentum going. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a little bit of a, oh, this is fine if I stay up here. Woohoo. What a nice day, man. This it is, is a nice day. Gorgeous out. Here's the one thing I think I'm gonna say though. This rack on the back of this one, I don't know that I'd recommend it for trail riding because when I hit the bumps, my behind is hitting the rack and that's not comfortable. 
But right. if you're gonna, like you probably wouldn't put a rack on it if you're trail riding anyway. The rack would probably be more for like in town stuff. Which way are we going? Uh, we'll go to the right. To the right, okay. To the right. You've never been back here before, have you? I have never been back here before. This is all new. There's okay, mud on. here. We won't go now through the mud. Now we've got mud. We'll oh, skip Jesus. the mud. Jesus help, the mud. Do you hear uh -oh. that? Okay, there we go. All Hopefully, right, we got it. We got it. We didn't wake up the bears. Well, it was like, I think it was, um, I don't know, like spinning out a little, maybe? Huh. I don't know how to describe what happened there, but made it out just fine. So what are your overall impressions as far as the ride goes? Let's take it right. The ride is fine. I do find myself using the throttle a little bit more in these types of scenarios. I don't think I want to try to manually get myself out of deep sandy spots. See, this is nice. Like for somebody who's not in like the best of shape myself, even though I'm working on it, I feel like that this is a nice way to be able to enjoy stuff like this without having to worry about like, am I in enough physical shape to be able to actually like do it because then with like I have an electric motor that's gonna help get me out of anything that maybe I just feel like I don't have the power to get myself out of so and what I like is that normally like if I were to go get my mountain bike and be like hey charity let's go mountain biking you what would you say well, I would actually say it really depends upon your definition of mountain biking and where are you going to go? Because you've done some pretty extreme stuff. Yeah. Like some of those mountain bike parks that have where it's like wood on a brick. I don't know how to even describe it. But like from what I've seen, I'm like, absolutely not. Like that is not my idea of fun. Right. But if and I were so, to say, hey, let's go take the X peaks out and go well if it's like if it's this type of trail yeah. this is fine like this is nice okay like this i don't know maybe some people consider this well you can't take a street bike on it i guess but stay off to the right here yeah for sure see the throttle oh good lord that River like a very large noise huh there's gators i heard that I know it was a really loud noise or it could have been a bear because there's bear. Thing about back here is you never know what you're going to come across. There's gators, there's bears, there's lizards, there's squirrels. 750 watt motor. So definitely the power that you need to get up hills coming through some of this sand. The other thing I like about it is even though you have that powerful motor to help get up the hills, like I was using just a pedal assist too, because for me, I like to actually feel a little bit of resistance because I don't want to feel like I'm just riding a motorcycle. I want to feel like I'm actually riding a bike. And so I could actually like coming up the hills, the pedal assist is there. I could have turned it way up. I mean, I had it down, but I like having that resistance to be able to get up the hill with just, you know, a little bit of help. So the range you're gonna get is about 40 to 50 mile range, depending on what pedal assist that you have it on. And so. I think it really depends too, like on what what's your use case, right? Like, are you gonna use this as something to go to town and get groceries? The bike comes with a bonus baskets, rear rack, and then also the fenders. In this sandy environment, if we didn't have those. <laughs> You're gonna end up with like a skunk stripe on your back. It's gonna be a skunk stripe in the back. Dirt or and mud and things like that. It also like splashes dirt and sand up into the chain and stuff, so. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about yeah. that. So that's like a really good thing to have to just kind of protect it and everything. Yeah. So that's cool, what else? Yeah, so the cooler is an accessory that you can get as well. Actually, I don't know where that goes, though. It looks like but it, we came it's in a this road. Way. Huh? What is that? It's a I ramp. Think... Oh, it's a ramp. Then head yeah. to the nowhere. So we not came going in this way. way. Not so... going the way with the ramp. Not going the way with the ramp. So we need to go this direction. Yep. Let's go that way. All right. That way. Is it jarring coming over those uh, big roots or not too bad? Uh, it's not jarring for me. I just, I mean, obviously my water bottle is like slapping against the cooler, but yeah. it's not bad. You should remember, it's not a Cadillac, right? Like <laughs> you're out for a mountain bike ride. It's right? not supposed to be ultra smooth. Do you feel like the bike's pretty stable though? 
on the trail? You, you know, interestingly enough, and I think it's like the principle of like, if you've ever driven a four wheeler on pavement, like when you drive a four wheeler on pavement, it actually is harder to steer versus when you're on dirt. So I actually feel like that the bike is better on this type of terrain than it is like on just like the cement trail, honestly. I'm also probably not going as fast as I would be on a, tr on a like, cement trail too. So that could be part of it. I think and every electric that we have had has had amazing like qualities, like no complaints at all with any of the electrics that we've owned. And then the, of course, just the different styles for different types of applications. All right, which way? Left. Left, left. All right, let's pick it up a little bit. Faster, he says, faster. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, help. Oh, that's fun. But if you have a truck, because you're towing a fifth wheel or a travel trailer or something like that, parking for big vehicles, especially in areas like Key West, is really hard to find. And then because of that, you don't want to drive like from place to place. And so you either want to use public transportation or we were talking last night about like bikes. And so this is the perfect type of thing to be able to use in those areas. Or maybe you just want to run down to a local farmer's market or something like that. I always think about, especially with like, you know, a bike that's at a higher price point is you want to make sure that it's secure. Yep. And so tell us about the locks. Yeah, the locks are great because you can attach them right to the bike and they come with the key and you just fold them out, lock up your bike and uh, throw the key in your pocket or, and you're ready to go. So everything you need is right there. The I love locks. it when, yeah, when it's built in and you don't have to think about like when you leave the campground, oh, did I grab the bike lock? But with it already being like attached to the bike, it's just one less thing that you have to like try to remember. Yeah. And then it does have the elite headlight. So it's an upgraded Ooh. headlight that Yeats. they come with. So they're super bright. You can turn them on for like safety during the day or um, at night. They're actually really bright. Which here's the funny thing. Like, per, like personally, I wouldn't be like, let's go for a bike right after dark. But I can't tell you how many times like living this lifestyle, you just have to get used to things not going as planned. And so even though we wouldn't plan a bike ride, like leaving after dark, I can't tell you how many times where we thought we'll be back by dark, by whatever. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't happen. So it's nice to have that to just kind of like as a peace of mind thing, right? Yeah. To just know like, okay, if I am out after sunset, after dark, we've got all of that that we need. Okay. So just a quick little tip, safety, right? Helmets. I do want to just say something that I'm super excited about because I'm just like saving money tickles my Twinkie, but my helmet, I found at a thrift store. It's like brand new, like literally brand new for five bucks. Nice. So, you know, as you're traveling about the country, it's always kind of fun to stop in some of like the local thrift stores and see what sort of gems you might find because I got a bike helmet for five bucks. Nice. All right. Well, shall we get this show yes. on the road? Let's get this show on the road. All right. So I was looking at the bikes earlier. My, my question to myself was, how do you take the battery in and out? Because you can take the battery in and out, especially if you want to save on some weight on putting on a bike rack. And like with your bike being black, I didn't notice this, but this one being a lighter color, then I noticed, okay, here's the battery cover. So here's where you could, yep. or is this the battery itself? That That's actually the whole battery. So, oh, so this you is the battery. charge it from there. This and then is the, charger. the cool thing is, is you, you have a key. So if you don't want someone to take it out and steal it, you could lock it, right? Oh, lock but the battery in place. to take it out, all you have to do is just press this and then... And That's it. And then? No, and then. Pop it out. And then. Oh. That's kind of handy for if you're wanting to reduce the weight to put it on right. the bike or, rack. Yeah. Like these types of batteries, you should not store them in extreme cold. So if like you have this bike and you're in a, like a northern, a northern climate, <laughs> um, you actually would want to bring the batteries somewhere inside where it's temperature controlled anyway. So right. that's one thing that you always want to remember with these types of batteries in general as they don't withstand super, super cold. So, all right, let's get back on. All right. Like, I'm having fun. Let's do it. Uh-oh. What? My mic fell off. 
Oh. I felt it drop. Whoops. Oh no, I didn't. It felt like, I guess it is on here. It felt like something dropped off. It's like decent terrain. This is not like your nice paved. What are you doing? Yeah. Oh, do, go ahead. Do you have a problem with your nipple? No, no. Like, I, was, I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> actually turn. Were you nipping turn, out? No, I was gonna turn like, on the, you, the mic, but anyways, keep it. You looked like on. you were touching yourself. No. <laughs> this is it's a, a tidbit nipply out here. Stop, this is a family friendly channel. We can't do that. <laughs> like we seriously can't do that. Okay. All right, so we said this a little bit earlier in the video, but you absolutely need to make sure that when you are transporting these things that you're doing it the right way. Now the X peaks don't fold, so you need to put them on some type of bike rack if you don't have a toy hauler. So we are using the Hollywood bike rack. Now this is made specifically for e-bikes super important you use the right type of rack application we have seen many times over the last five years of rv travel where people actually have lost their bike racks off the back of their travel trailers or fifth wheels because they were not using a robust hitch system for their bikes especially with these they're heavier than your standard bikes you need to make sure that you're doing it the right way We'll have a link in the description for this particular bike rack. We absolutely love it. This is what we're using to transport our e-bikes. We'll also have information below on getting the new electric X-Peak. There's some really cool packages available, kind of as an intro offer. So you wanna make sure that you get that sooner versus later to make sure that you get all of the cool goodies that are included. And if we don't see you out on the road or around the campground, we'll catch you in the next video.